Today we're going to be looking at the Cybex Melio, a small-sized, urban-oriented model whose main selling point is that it's ridiculously light for a stroller of its type, lighter even than most ultra-compacts, where lately I've frankly been seeing the weight put back on to add structural strength. But not Cybex, no. They've pulled on their zebra pants and chosen to walk their own road with this one, producing a model lighter even than the Baby Zen Yo-Yo, despite being nearly twice as big and having a removable seat frame. And in this video then, we're going to scrutinize whether the concept works, going over the Melio's advantages and disadvantages in terms of child comfort, ease of use, performance and mechanics, as well as in relation to which lifestyles and environments it will best suit. And starting off with some stats, the Melio clocks in then at 6 kilos and folds down to 37.5 by 49 by 71.5 centimeters. It can carry 5 kilos in the underslung shopping basket and a whopping 25 kilos in the seat, as claimed on Cybex's American site since EU regulations only allow strollers to be advertised as taking 15 kilos. When it comes to child comfort, the Melio uses Cybex's standard Lux seat design, which is adjustable both in terms of its leg rest and the recline, from properly upright all the way down to a newborn acceptable full flat position. Size-wise, the seat measures 31 centimeters in width and has a total length of 93 centimeters, measured by adding up the lengths of the leg rest, baseboard, backboard, and space beneath the canopy, which will comfortably fit a child until around three years old or so, though it's important to note that the lack of a foot rest means that there won't be any leg support for children over around a year and a half, which can be a bit uncomfortable if you're using the stroller for more than just short trips. As far as the textiles go, the Melio feels a bit on the cheaper side, consisting of a standard canvas-feeling material that I've seen on several Cybex Gold Line models before, that has sufficient padding but cuts corners where possible, such as by having only a single layered canopy. Though please note that this is the basic Melio, and not the Melio Carbon, a somewhat higher priced luxury version of the same model that has more premium fabrics. When it comes to sun coverage, the Melio's canopy is quite large, providing excellent protection and also having two flap-covered mesh peekaboo windows to provide ventilation. Moving on to parent comfort, the Melio has an adjustable handle with a height range of between 96 and 107 centimeters, a large and easily accessible shopping basket, and a couple of activation mechanisms that I find quite pleasing to the fingers, in the retro pull button for releasing the fold, and the boogaboo-esque memory buttons for removing the seat frame. When it comes to folding, right out of the box, the Melio has a smooth, one-handed, one-piece, self-standing fold that can be accomplished with the seat in either the forwards or parent-facing configurations. And the folded package is both decently compact for storing in the trunk and also so light for carrying that I find it a real missed opportunity that they didn't add a shoulder strap. Despite these positive characteristics, however, the extremely slender and delicate build that Cybex has used in order to keep the Melio's weight so light makes using the model in all ways, including folding, feel unfortunately very flimsy, as though it might break at any moment, in particular when steering, or even worse, tipping the model, where the whole chassis strains against the child's weight so much that with a larger toddler in the forwards-facing position, I would even call the model untippable, as a strain on the handle arms just feels way too sketchy. Compounding this fragility is the model's narrow and unstable feeling rear frame, where, with the seat parent facing, the Melio is a tipping hazard, a problem that has already become an oft-reiterated theme in the model's customer reviews. Lastly, when it comes to terrain capability, that lightweight, fragile structure strikes again, making anything other than the smoothest terrain a real problem, despite the fact that the model has acceptably sized wheels, as it's apt to get hung up on impediments such as broken sidewalks or gravel, with the chassis bending and straining against forward motion rather than just powering its way through. Okay, let's move on to the mechanics of the Melio then, looking it over top to bottom and starting with the hinged height adjustment mechanisms on the handle, which are generally a weaker choice than telescopic setups for four-wheelers due to their more front-heavy design that increases the pressure from tipping and steering and makes these mechanisms then highly susceptible to loosening over time. As far as the design of the fold is concerned, the seat mechanisms are sturdy enough, the Lux seat being an element that Cybex has perfected for some time. But the folding mechanisms on the chassis are a bit weaker, with the model employing a double wire and pin setup where the hinged handle mechanisms connect to the central adjustment button via a first set of wires and, as the handle rotates, a second set of wires in the arms activate the actual locking points further down. 
And the problem here then is that, though this sort of system has become pretty commonplace, it involves a lot of complex internal components susceptible to alignment problems, from the fact that the model's lighter build will undoubtedly loosen up quite a bit after a year or so of use. When it comes to the overall structure, the model compensates for its weaker materials by dispersing tension across the chassis, in particular to two key areas, the rear frame, whose design has been built like a suspension bridge to aim pressure via its multiple vertical bars to a sturdy cross-support setup at the base of the rear frame consisting of three separate crossbars, and also unfortunately to the handle arms, which have not been so cleverly reinforced, rather being too thin in my opinion to hold up in the long run, and are thus the model's key weak point structurally and likely the first place to break as a result of accidents or overloading. Moving down to the rear frame, while that suspension bridge setup is aesthetically pleasing, and again, sort of clever from a structural design point of view, it's all been done to facilitate a narrow rear frame, which, in particular when combined with a slightly too malleable suspension, feels quite unstable, being really a choice then of aesthetics over performance, where the model in my opinion would have been better served by being wider and a bit less dainty. As far as other elements of the rear frame go though, the model is decently designed, with a simple rotation-based brake system that's unlikely to develop problems down the line, tightly fitted rear wheels, and tires on all the wheels, consisting of strong, wear-resistant rubberized foam. And looking lastly at the front end, the front wheels are decently sized, even though their terrain capability has been thwarted by the fragility of the chassis and the fact that there's no suspension in the forks. And the model doesn't have swivel locks, which is okay I guess, since the wheels sit tightly within their housings, meaning that there's less chance for wobbling problems than is common on most Cybex Goldline models. The entire construction of the front frame is not quite as reinforced as the rear though, with the proportions of the wheel housings and crossbar being quite thin, making for yet another place on the model that could break rather easily as a result of overloading weight, accidents, or trying to force the stroller over too uneven terrain. So, should you get the Melio then? No. Not in my opinion. Despite having been more creative in the design of some of the mechanisms on the model and in the stroller's general structure, which I commend Cybex for and would definitely like to see more of in the future, that key design choice to build a model of this size at only six kilos severely limits both durability and performance to the point where it's simply far outclassed by a wide variety of other small size daily use strollers sold at roughly the same price and with not so much more weight that they can't equally fulfill the same sort of light, urban-oriented role with which the Melio is advertised. In any case, we hope you found this video interesting, and if you did, please subscribe or even hit the donate button if you're so inclined, as this sort of support helps us to continue making videos in the future. In addition, if you're currently shopping for a stroller, we have a buyer's guide on our Patreon page which lists a wide range of models that we recommend, with a lot of technical and lifestyle-related information. You can find it by following the link in the description. Thank you.